Well, hello again, everybody. In today's video, I am going to unbox something. Now, this is a PC that I purchased from Newegg. It is a refurbished PC. That's an old HP Desk Pro desktop. It was very cheap, as I indicated uh, in the description of this video. It came out to $35 and free shipping. Now, being in New York, I had to pay some sales tax along with that. Depending on where you're at, you could probably save that $4.80, I think it was. I'll show up on the screen here the actual invoice for this PC. Unfortunately, Newegg is not running that sale anymore. I just happened to have caught it at the right time. They still sell it, but the price went up to nearly $80 and includes, I think, $12 in shipping. So you're not going to save the money that I saved at this point. But I still think it's something to look into. Maybe keep your eye peeled for future deals like it. Anyway, I'm not 100% sure what's in this box. I know that there's a PC in here. I also know that there's not a monitor in here. So I got my monitor handy and ready to go to connect up to this. Because after I unbox it, I want to turn it on and make sure that it works. So with that, let me open this up. And this is... A Scout's Honor, the first time I'm unboxing this one. Okay, what have we got in here? I was wondering about that. Depending on what I read, it indicated that there was a keyboard and mouse included. So it looks like it does. It has an HP USB keyboard, no less. And it's hard to tell if this is an HP mouse or not. Uh, it is also USB. Also in this bag, it looks like we have the power cable. So let me open this bag up to start because I'm going to need that. Pull it out of the bag, the mouse, and see if it says anything about HP on it. Actually, it doesn't. It says Dell. <laughs> If you look here on the front of the mouse, it's impressed into the plastic. It's not painted in, but it says Dell. Oh well, that's where it's at. What do we got in here? Oh, they got some pretty strong wrapping. Looks like a hard drive packaging almost. Let me pull this thing out of here. Yeah, it's just like one of those bubble containers that you ship the hard drives in. I'm going to save this. Looks like a nice package in case I have to ship something like this. What do we got here in terms of CDs? Looks like I have a recovery disc. Disc 1, 2. This one here says uh, Windows 7 Recovery Media. But as you can look in here, you will see that uh, we actually have a package of four DVDs that came with this. It says it came with Windows 7. Sure enough, it has the actual label for the, with the Windows 7 key on it. So it's a legal copy of Windows 7. Just like if you bought this new from HP. And it's got the Core i5 stickers on the front and the Windows 7 sticker on the front as well. It's got all the USBs, it's got a network connector, the regular standard traditional audio. It's got a parallel port printer, parallel printer port on it. Look at this. So what you have back here, that's an old parallel port, like you connect the printer to. And this is a serial port. This is a VGA port. And what is that one? You know what that looks like? It looks like that might be a display port connector. I may have to resort to VGA, which I believe that thing does support it, so it should work. Let me make sure that this thing supports VGA. I believe it does. Yes, it does. I'll have to get a VGA cable. It's got the old PS2 mouse and keyboard connectors on it. That's what's over here. The old PS2 mouse keyboard. It's got a network. From what I read online, that should be a one gigabit Ethernet. Let me get a cable for the monitor and let me get network cable and connect it all up. Okay, I have it all hooked up now. The only thing I noticed that wasn't right was the keyboard is missing one of the risers in the back to allow it to prop up a little bit. So I'll have to lie it flat. The other one on the other side is missing over here. So that's the only thing I found that's wrong so far with this. I have not turned it on yet. I want to turn it on in front of the camera and see what happens. I got everything plugged in. Let me turn the monitor on first. It's connected through a VGA. The cables are all in. And then I have to hit this little button here, I believe. 
There was our breaker back here. Okay, what am I doing wrong? Oh, it's on. It is on. Oh, I see something happening on the screen. Start windows normally. We do that. Starting windows. Windows 7 is coming up. How about that? It's a complete fresh load of Windows 7, so it thinks that it has to come up for the first time. I'll try to network later. I couldn't find the cable quick enough to get it hooked up here, but I do have it available back here somewhere. Windows 7. Okay, let me uh, click next. Type the username. So I'm gonna use my normal admin username for this. I'm gonna name it HP Rebuild. Type your password, recommended. Okay, what's it asking for here? It's asking for... Windows 7 Professional, no less. I didn't know it had Windows 7 Professional. What I plan to do in the next video, if this works okay, this is the reason I got it, actually. I want to make sure that I can still upgrade this to Windows 10. So this should be upgradable to Windows 10 Professional. So if everything that I've read with a legal license on this with Windows 7, I should be able to still upgrade it. And in the next video, I'll be able to prove that. Looking good so far. For me, even with New York tax, this was less than $60, including shipping, because for me, I got a good deal. And I'll show you that at the end of this video, the new egg deals that I look at almost every day. I try to every day, but sometimes I don't get a chance to, because some of their deals I've made out well on. And you really should look on the ones that have free shipping. And if you happen to be lucky enough to live in a state that doesn't have the tax, you're going to do even better. Okay, so what I did while I was waiting for it to initialize, to get to this point anyway, I went ahead and got the network cable and connected it up. So now this is connected to my local area network here in my home office. And it looks like it's waiting for me to click on this big go here. It's acting just like a brand new HP computer as if I had bought it new. What we got here. Windows 7 desktop, or at least the HP version of it. Let me go ahead and do control panel. I want to change desktop icons. Much easier to do in Windows 7 than Windows 10. I want to see the computer, I want to see the control panel, and I want to see the network. So I'm going to apply those changes so I should see those icons then on my desktop. Let me get out of here and see, and sure enough, there it is. What's the resolution set to here? Screen resolution. It's 800 by 600. Can I at least go 1024 by 768? Yeah, I can. So that works. So I'm going to keep those changes. So now I have this up and running. Let me see what the computer looks like. I got a drive C. It's got 141 gigabyte. Now that is not what was listed in the um, specs for this computer. It actually said it had a 330 gigabyte hard drive. It has a DVD. What I can do is I'll check later and see if I can... Um, Reconfigure the hard drive. Let me see. Manage. Let's see what it really looks like. Go into disk management. Oh, I see. I have 150 unallocated space. So I can turn that into another drive. The way it's structured, this HP recovery disk may be in the way I just can't easily extend the operating system that's, on, that's assigned to drive C right now. But I can turn this into another drive. So when I reload it with uh, Windows 10, I'm not going to have it structured this way. But then again, it won't stay there that long because if this computer works out well, it's a decent performing processor. So I'll probably put more memory in it. It's only got four gig right now. It's a 64 bit operating system. So it's got actually Windows Professional 64 bit. That is uh, more than I expected to be honest with you. Got Service Pack 1. It's not going to stay Windows 7, I hope. I'm going to try upgrading it and see what happens. I think it can hold up to 32 gig from what I read. So that means there's probably two free slots in there. So what I may do is buy two more 4 gigabyte DIMMs, add them in there. That'll give me a total of, of 12 gigabytes of memory. Windows is fully activated. 
So this is a legal copy, now it's fully activated. This is the ideal test for my next video when I try to upgrade this to Windows 10. So what I'm doing now is I was able to connect to my local area network and I've copied over my PC tools from my network drive over to here. So now I have the tools on here and I can actually run maybe a little bit of performance testing. Don't expect much out of it, but at least I can do it if I want to try it. Let me see if I can get to the internet. Uh, it doesn't like this browser, so I'd have to upgrade this browser. Let me go load Firefox. Download now. I do not want a Bing bar. English US 64-bit. It's downloading. Do you want to allow the following program? Yeah, let it, let it do what it needs to do. I finish. Get Firefox up. Tube. And then I'll type in PE for doers. And there I am. Hi, everybody. Welcome to my channel. And I'll reiterate that. Please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I think we're looking good. I can now try maybe one of these diagnostics or two. Let me see, go to PC tools. Let me do something simple to start with. Let me try crystal disk mark. It's gonna set for drive C. Let me say test all, see what we got. Not the fastest of discs, 91 and a half. Didn't even get anywhere near. A uh, decent performing hard disk would give you, which is closer to 140 to 150. So it's probably, you know, like a 5400 RPM disk in there, if I'm lucky. So anyway, this does work, and we get an idea for where it's at. I'll go ahead and stop this. I don't need to finish this test. We know it's working. I am curious, though, what happens if I try to do Windows Update? Let me go ahead and try and see that. Windows is supposed to be unsupported. Windows 7 is supposed to be unsupported at this time. So let me see what it does. So I come in here and go into the control panel. I like it by large icons. This should be a Windows update right there. Check for updates. Let's see what it says. It's never done any updates. So it's a brand new fresh load of Windows. Windows 7 that is. I am hoping that it will at least update it to the point of no longer supporting Windows 7 but I'll have to wait and see exactly what it actually produces, if anything, here. So let me uh, just jump ahead here, and we'll see if we get a message in a little bit. Hey, it actually has identified the first round of updates. Since this is Windows 7, even with Service Pack 1, there's a lot of updates potentially to it. But at least it looks like Microsoft has not blocked the updating, at least to the point where they no longer supported it, I guess, you know, the third week in January. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it to install these updates and see how it goes. It may take a while before I actually see any results from this, and it may go through multiple rounds, which I fully expect it to do. But then we'll see if we can get it through the couple of rounds of updates, and we have a working PC. Okay, it's done pretty good so far. Approaching the end of the first round of Windows updates for Windows 7. So it didn't seem to be bothered at all by the fact that the actual support for Windows 7 has stopped. I would believe, however, that it's not going to get any updates past the, the deadline that was in the third week in January, as I said earlier. So we'll see. I believe if it follows normal patterns, there are a lot of Windows 7 updates. So what will happen in most likelihood, it'll be rebooting and then it'll have to install more updates. And it takes two, three, I think I heard of even four rounds on a fresh load of Windows 7. So we'll have to wait and see what happens with this. So at this point, we're up to the last update. And it says I have to restart it right now. So we'll go ahead and click restart. Two of the updates failed, which means those are gonna, there's a sequence problem with some of these updates with Windows 7. I haven't seen that problem with Windows 10, so they might have corrected it or kind of put a different methodology for a Windows 10. Go ahead and force it, and then I'll have to go back in and do a, another Windows update and see how many more things it's going to have to catch. I went back and took a look at the specs while I had the camera off, and it looks like that extra port there is a display port. So I don't have a display port connector on this monitor, but I do have it on my other monitors, so what I'll do is I'll probably be testing that independently. Okay, so now it's actually rebooted and it's configuring the Windows updates. This may take a while, so what I'll probably do is jump ahead and come back on once it has completed the updates. Okay, now it's rebooted already twice, and now it's waiting for login. I think at this point we can call it. 
I think it, this has proven that this PC works just fine. And as I said before in my next video, what I will do is I will go ahead and try to upgrade this to Windows 10. Now to make it so that it follows my procedure that I gave in a previous video, I'm going to pull that hard drive out and put another hard drive in it so I can retain this one with Windows 7 on it in case I have a problem and I need to go back to this. Okay, before I close out this video, let me show you how I got this great deal through Newegg. If you just go to the regular Newegg site, you don't even have to log in, and you look right what's on the front page. It'll give you some direct deals that they want you to pay attention to. But if you click on this one, it says see all deals. In this case, you start to get a preview of all the other deals that they have. And it was one of these deals here that I saw this prefurbished PC being sold at a very discounted price. And I've been lucky with this more than once. I highly recommend that you check it out and see what you like. I mean, I'm looking at this right now. I didn't look at it yet today. And I'm trying to see if there's something that jumps out at me. This keyboard looks pretty interesting. So that's something I may actually consider going for. I have four hours though, so I'll have to look at it right after I finish editing this video. I could use another Barracuda SSD. Two, four, 250 gigabytes, hmm, that might be kind of small. But this is the, the logic that I follow. I also am looking for a couple of these Western Digital Red NAS drives. So I may look at that, but 5400 RPM may not work out too well. Anyway, this is how I found it. And I just wanted to point it out to everybody. And I highly suggest you go and take a look yourself. I appreciate everybody who was able to watch this video all the way through. And do me a favor, my head will pop up here in a moment. Click on it, follow along, and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you want to give this video a like, that would help too. Thanks for watching, and until the next time, take care.